Okay, cool, yeah. Hey there, my name is Sainer Moserva. I am the current Vice President of Business for Venture Robotics, and I was the previous Director of Sponsorships. So this is something that I've kind of just dealt with through the course. And then Jackson oh. is... Yeah, hi, um, my name is Jackson Castillo. To this year, I am the Sponsorship Lead. And last year, I was a newbie on the business team doing a lot of what I'm going to talk to you guys about today. So kind of just start, okay, yeah. So let's just go through a table of contents. In terms of what we're gonna talk about, we'll talk about who we are, our team, um, what a sponsorship does for a team, uh, finding different sponsors, contacting these uh, sponsors, and also keeping a sponsor. Um, we'll also kind of go into what grants are and some like common grants that teams can apply for. And we'll just end it off in a note where we're gonna conclude that a team is expensive, which considering all of you guys are here, you guys already know that, so it's like, yeah. All right. So why don't you tell them a bit about us? Next. <laughs> yeah, okay. So Avenger Robotics was founded in 2018 by 20 individuals uh, who wanted to bring robotics and STEM into Alliance Academy for Innovation. Um, and currently, we have about 40 members in our team. And not only is it from just the mechatronics pathway, but we also have members coming in from international business, some from graphic design and um, uh, computer science. Um, and we also have a recap video. Yes, we'd like we to do show have you. a recap video to show you guys. Start right there. Sensitivity is very low. Cool. Yeah. So a big thing about just well, obviously with the recap video and all is that we couldn't have done all of this without our mentor. At the same time, we couldn't have done all of this without our sponsors. See, these are the organizations and the companies that are giving us money and finances in, in order to compete, in order to do these outreach events. You can go to the next slide. So you know, these, this is a list of all the organizations that we are sponsored by. Some of these we reached out to and they sponsored to us. Some of these are grant process. Some of these we had to go into their like, organization or main area and kind of present on what we do. So I'm a big Oppenheimer fan, and I watched the movie over the summer. Now, one of the quotes he has is, the optimist thinks this is the best of all possible worlds, whereas the pessimist thinks, uh, well, fears that it's true. So the meaning of this quote is, as an optimist, you want to get all the good out of it, but a pessimist or somebody that fears the bad will get the bad out of it. So you might be thinking, optimism and fundraising, how does that go hand in hand? So when you are talking to these organizations, talking to these companies, cold calling them, which uh, Jackson will talk about um, further into the presentation, you want to stay optimistic because you're going to be calling thousands of companies, if not like hundreds of them, and you're, you, know, you might not get a response back and you, know, you rarely will get a response and you just want to stay optimistic. So kind of, we're going to look, uh, so looking at the estimated revenue that we had for last year, you know, a lot of these sponsors you know, helps a lot. It, it, it really does. Um, especially cutting down on like how much we're going to have when we go to Worlds or how much we want for our rollover, right? So when you're look, looking at the finances and the, and the sponsorships and the grants that you're applying for, you want to make sure you have a perfect rollover for the year after so you can still invest. But at the same time, you want to make sure that everything is leveled enough to the point where you're able to spend a good amount of money at States and at Worlds if you do make it. All right. So, Hi, my name is Jackson Castillo, and as you just said, I'm going to be talking to you guys a little bit about cold calls. Now, cold calls, while they might seem small and minuscule for each and every call you make, it does eventually make a huge impact on your team. Now, since I'm not usually the best at exemplifying or explaining things, I'm going to have some other people do it for me. Now, I'm on. Wait, don't play yet. So, I am sure that you guys have heard of a very small show, right? Uh, some people like it. It's called The Office. Um, in The Office, they are a paper salesman company. So they have to go around selling themselves and their products to other people. Now, how I like to exemplify this is through their work of cold calls. And we're going to see a little bit of that in action here. <laughs> so a couple of things were exemplified very, very clearly there. The first thing I want to mention, Dwight started out good. Can one of you guys tell me how he started out, which is what you should be doing in your cold calls? Any one of you? Let's hear it. Uh, you started out like calm, cool, and collected, and kind of got worse and worse in the dog. That's great. He had an amazing tone. He started out with when he was calm before he started in a fast pace. That's great. Now, what did he? What did he say about himself? Like, 
Like, what did, who did he say he was? He said he was like a, someone selling paper from this company. Exactly. That is perfect. That's how I want you guys to start out your cold calls. When you start out your cold calls, those people have time. They don't, they, sorry, let me rephrase that. They don't have time. At least not for you anyways. So you want to you want to grasp their time and hold it in your hands carefully. You want to make sure that you use their time wisely. You want to state efficiently who you are, what your purpose for calling is, a little bit about yourself, of course, because you can't necessarily just call call up and say, "Hey, I'm a robotics person, give me money." And you got to have that calm, cool and collected tone. Now, let's talk about what he did wrong. He didn't have enough patience. And patience is something you're going to have to have a lot of when you're doing these cold calls. Like Sai mentioned earlier, not every call is going to be a success, which means that you're going to have to keep a cool and calm, level-headed head throughout the entire thing. Sai, if you don't mind going to the next slide, please. Now, last year when I was a rookie on this team, I had to do a lot of cold calls. Each and every line you see here on this Google Sheet is a company that we called. Every single blank white space, every single red line, those are all companies that either didn't respond or flat out rejected us. And it, I'm going to be honest with you, as a rookie on the year, it was tough, right? Like you, you joined the team in order to make a difference. You joined the team in order to get to like, you know, have a purpose, right? And whenever you get rejected by these companies, it hurts. It really does, which is why you got to have that patience. Those four lines there, those cyan lines. Those are four companies that ultimately did end up giving us money, that ultimately heard our proposal and decided that we were worth the investment. And those four companies, out of the dozens that we had called, provided a huge, like a huge financial impact to our team. Without them, we wouldn't have probably been able to make it to districts, states, even worlds. Like, if, if you get there, which hopefully you guys do, but you, you got to have money to go there, and it's, it's a little rough. Now, let's say that you have gotten one of those four companies, right? You've, you've, you've gotten their business. How do you keep in touch with them? Because they don't just give you money and you just let them off the hook for a while. You don't give them any news or anything whatsoever. Yeah, next slide. Do I? Yeah, ne next slide. So, here we have a QR code. The QR code has our sponsorship packet, right? Our sponsorship packet is something that you have to or should be sending your sponsors. This sponsorship packet contains information about your team. It contains information about how much money they could invest in your team and what benefits they get from it. Because they're not only investing in you and your cause for no reason, they've got to get something out of it as well. So if you look at one of the pages in the sponsorship packet, there is a tier list and so what that tier list is, we always have that golden tier that we want these sponsors to kind of hit at. And that's where they get a lot of stuff off of it. At the same time, obviously we're getting a monetary support from them, but they're gonna be advertised through our shirts, through our robot, through our events, outreach events, or even our videos. So you, you kind of need to uh, map out like a good kind of tier list, uh, specifically for your team or specifically in terms of like where you guys are um, and kind of figure out from there. All right, now, here's an example of an email in which we would send one of our sponsors. As you can see, it has three paragraphs, which I like to name the three key components of an email. First email, and these are for cold emails wise, like you're emailing a company that you haven't spoken to yet, or this, like, this is also for companies that you've spoken to previously. First, who you are. Just like a cold call, you have to explain your purpose of why you're emailing, who you are, and why they should care. Second, you have, your, you have a little bit explaining about what you do, why they should care about what you do. I like how Sai mentioned it when he was talking to me earlier about aligning mission goals. If you want to establish that personal connection with that company for you to gain the sponsorship, it's very important that you can have them get a natural connection to you as a team if, you're, if your goals align. You could talk about anything from your initiatives that you're doing to your events that you're holding or anything else possible that could link you to them to help you guys feel connected. Last, we have the finisher. The finisher is very, very important because I like to, in my emails, 
I like to maintain a formal yet friendly tone because we don't want to be robotic in our messaging with these sponsors. In our in Avenger Robotics, we like to treat sponsors as family because we both support each other in as many ways as we possibly can. And if they're supporting us as much as we support them, then we're going to want to, you know, keep a connection, right? It's not anything huge, too formal. You just got to keep that connection with that sponsor. And that helps with sustainability, which I'm going to talk about next. So another thing I would like to add is, you know, with the whole second paragraph and all of that, you know, an example I could give is like contacting Revian, right? When we did contact Revian, we had to kind of state our mission goals, right? We have a recycling outreach initiative, right? And how does that help with their sponsorship? Or how does that align with their mission statement as an organization, as a business, right? Um, and you kind of want to go from there. And key word uh, for the last one is optimism. You want to have an optimistic tone at the end, which I've said too many times by now. <laughs> But you want to stay optimistic, right? Because you want these guys to look at your email, to look at your sponsorship packet, to look at all the stuff that you've done online and just in terms of your initiatives and be like, hey, this team is good. We want to spend money on them. We want to invest on them. We want to give them kind of something to look forward to, right? And that's kind of what you want. You want to advertise. You want to market. <laughs> all right. Yes, here are a couple more examples of sponsorship emails that we've sent before. They range anywhere from a little wordy to, to a lot of words, which I don't necessarily recommend, but it's more just a broad spectrum of what you can hope to expect when writing an email to your sponsors. So I'll if, give you you look, if you kind of look through the packet, there's going to be a couple where it's just like a little short paragraph. Um, and then there's going to be a couple that are too wordy. And in terms of what uh, Jackson means by that is that we have a good amount of bullet points where we just talk about accomplishments and all of that. But nowadays, what we kind of do is we shorten it down with, uh, and then we just provide them the videos and the sponsorship packet, which kind of shortens everything down. It makes it sweet and simple. And we're able to show Im like an imagery stance of what we do instead of stating everything. All right. Now, earlier I talked about how Avenger Robotics likes to treat their sponsors like family. And obviously, you don't just have family for one year and then attempt to abandon it the next, right? You try to keep that sponsorship. And that's what we try to achieve by being a sustainable team and in the form of sponsorships. Now, there's really one crucial way that you guys could be able to keep your sponsors for year after year after year, and that is? Newsletters. So, or, you know what? First, yep. before we get into that, you want to do what you've told and what you've promised. Right? Because let's just say your team has a bunch of outreach in initiatives. So when we contact these sponsors, when we let them know about our organization to kind of invest in us, to sponsor us, we tell them our outreach events, right? our initiatives. And this kind of goes into, if you, if you were in our uh, previous presentations for Impact and Engineering Inspiration, we kind of dwell into outreach and how you should structure it. Right? Depending on how you structure it, you're able to market the, uh, to these companies and try to get these sponsors. So another thing that you want to do is kind of give them daily newsletters. So these are, this is our Worlds newsletter. And so we sent this to every single sponsor when we made it to Worlds. Um, not only does it just talk about, hey, we made it to Worlds, but it talks about our accomplishments through that competition. Um, and beyond this, we also send newsletters uh, during the New Year's, uh, during Christmas, just letting them know, hey, this is what, we're been, this is what we, we've been up to. And um, you know, we, you know, we still want to keep in contact with you. So now I'm going to have side talk about grants. Right. So what are grants? Uh, grants are kind of like college applications, college scholarship applications for a robotics team. So what you're going to be doing is um, an example for this is the access and equity grant. If you want to see the full thing, there's also a QR code for that. When you look at the access and equity grant, um, even though we didn't get this, we kind of split it off into talking about who we are and each of the initiatives. So for different companies, you'll have different uh, prompts. Uh, for NASA, it is similar to this, um, but it's very different in the sense that they'll ask you about your mentors. They ask you about how m mentors facilitate um, kind of like the learning and the innovation that takes place in your program. Now, if you are looking for other grants, um, kind of, um, uh, you know, for, for this year, uh, I know there's a couple that are still offering. And then there's, I know for NASA, it's not um, allocated to veteran teams anymore. So it's more of only rookie teams. Um, but... You know, it's, it's kind of a good thing to kind of get into because not only if you have a rookie kind of working on this, not only are they able to kind of learn more and dwell more into the initiatives, but it kind of gives them a strong understanding of why um, we do this. So kind of the final note of this is like a team is expensive. You want to fund it. 
and um, you want to, in, in order to make it more sustainable, you have to kind of fund it. You have to co contact these organizations, contact these uh, companies, and uh, just apply for a bunch of grants and just see where that takes you. But at the same time, you want to understand the finances of your team. So All right. That's, that's about it. And then, so um, the rest of this time is open for you guys to ask us any questions that you may have regarding sponsorships, funding a team in general, grants.